I know what you're thinking. Terror, how'd you manage to find such a rare and valuable artifact? Well, here's the story. I was shopping at my local thrift store and in the corner of my eye I found Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun. Now a normal person would just say it looks like complete shovelware and BAD, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. And clearly this was the best game ever made. So I bought it for the low low price of $8,000 for the low low price of $5. Now if we do some basic math, $5 for 30 games means it goes for about 16.6 .6 cents per game. And above all, every single one of them are great games. Which is clearly a steal for the price, and is definitely not lying to get me to buy the game. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun. Before we get started, I just want to mention how poor the condition was on the packaging of this game. This has got to be one of the poorest conditioned games I've ever purchased. It was covered in a texture that just felt like pure dirt. It also had not one, but three stickers on it. That's probably because no one wants to keep this pile of garbage. That's because people don't want to keep this masterpiece to themselves and share it with everyone they know. Now without further ado, let's finally play Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun for the Nintendo Wii. The UI in Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun is typical to your average Wii game. Basically, randomly use motion controls in order to control the menu, even though the Wii Remote and Nunchuck have perfectly usable D-pads and sticks respectively. It can sometimes be painful to navigate at times, and it's especially annoying when you're trying to enter a name with the motion controls. But I guess that could be forgiven, cause every Wii game is like that. But at least with Wii Sports, you're not forced to use the pointer. Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun presumably contains 30 great games. But the funny thing about that is no, at least when you first start the game. Because over half of the 30 great games are only available when you unlock them. Because of course you have to unlock over half the minigames in a shovelware game about minigames. So anyways, maybe instead of complaining I should actually talk about... Clearly this game has the best gameplay. In a party game revolving around minigames, the most important thing is how fun the minigames are. Whereas something like Mario Party has fun boards and memorable minigames, Family Party 30 Great Games has really creative minigames like The Pole Climb 2 and The Home Run Match. But I'm not gonna rush over things, let's go into detail. By that I mean I'm gonna talk about 14 out of 30 great games because the rest of them are unlockable so that's really stupid. The first minigame is The Floating Island. The main goal of this minigame is to make it to the end. Sounds pretty simple, right? Yeah, you're right. The only problem is that the controls are actually the worst thing I've ever played in a video game. Everything just feels stiff, and after you press the jump button it takes a full second for the character to actually do what you want them to do. And unlike every competent platformer, you can't adjust your jump after you make it. Which only leads to you falling, over and over again. And also, I don't know why there's still four screens even when I'm playing with bots. The next minigame is The Boxer Size. This is clearly a rhythm game. But instead of clicking a circle or swiping in a certain direction, you have to waggle and swing the Wii Remote in various ways. This works about as well as you'd expect it to. Basically, not at all. Especially since it was designed with the regular Wiimotes in mind, and not Motion Plus. Another big problem with this minigame is that you have to go through it over and over again. Faster and faster every time. You know, instead of just ending the minigame. But besides the fact it's completely unplayable, yeah, it's alright. The next minigame is The Inner Clock 2. Well, I'm glad I never had to play the Inner Clock 1 because this is actual shit! So the goal of the game is to press the A button when you think your timer matches the timer at the top. It's really not all that fun, and the majority of the gameplay comes down to... <laughs> I'm the man! Oh my! Which doesn't really lead to the most interesting gameplay. Another problem is that once everyone's done hitting the button, you have to do it again! 
Yeah, I really think three rounds of this is a bit unnecessary, but whatever. This game is poop. Moving on. The next mini game is the Hammer Strike. You know how in the Mario 64 Bowser fights you could grab Bowser and spin him around and throw him? Yeah, well this is like that, but as a mini game, and a bad one at that, you have to spin the controller to spin around and then press A to release. Again, the Wii Nunchuck has a perfectly usable stick, so why don't you just use that, instead of forcing motion controls into everything? The only really good thing about this minigame is that it ends pretty quickly, and doesn't last for 80 years like all the other ones. The next minigame is the Pole Climb 2. Yeah, I don't get this game. So you waggle the Wii Remote to go up the pole, but then there's stuff in your way and you have to jump to other poles, and I don't know how to do that, because the game doesn't tell you. I mean, it does, but you have to go out of the way to look at them. It's not like in Mario Party, where they clearly give you the instructions on how to play each minigame. So yeah, they exist, they're just out of the way. And because the instructions aren't right in my face, it makes all the minigames way harder. But like the last minigame, the best part is that it ends pretty quickly. Alright, next we got The Obstacle Race 2. Okay, seriously, why are we only playing the sequels to these minigames? Where are the originals? So in this game, you run! I'm sure you're never gonna guess how you do that. And yeah, I still have very little idea of what to do. But we're back to the realm of single-player split-screen, so that's cool. You win if you make it to the end of the obstacle course first. And to that I say, good luck with that, cause these bots actually go sicko mode. Next up is The Reflexes. Wow, really cool name there. Now I just don't understand this game. So this is obviously to test your reaction time. But yet, when you hit a direction, it takes more than a full second to hold down the thing. And even once you do hold it down, sometimes it keeps moving anyways. Another major problem with this minigame is that not only do you have to wait for every single family member to go through it, but you also have to go through three rounds. This is one of the longest minigames in the whole game, and yet content-wise it's still completely empty. The next game is the Unicycle. In this game, you let little Billy experience traumatic brain damage. Or he could do this, this is cool too. Yeah, even with the instructions, this one's just pure jank. It just feels so slippery and you could barely move straight without falling over. Yeah, this is a no from me. The next game is the beach flag. What's a beach flag, you may ask? Doesn't matter, the minigame's already over. The boat race, goddammit, I couldn't care less, please let me go. So anyways, you- Wango. The home run match. Imagine Wii Sports, but bad. That's all I had in the script. Moving on. Yeah! Oh my. Fuck you, Granny Smith! The last mini game is the quarterback. Oh, I guess I didn't connect my nunchuck. So this mini game is the longest, but also the most interesting of them all. Interesting enough to last five minutes? No. So basically, the entire family takes turns trying to get a touchdown. I don't know why there's some random family playing with NFL players, but okay. The controls for this game are also dreadful. You use the nunchuck to move, and then you aim with the pointer, press A to set up your throw, and then waggle to do your throw. Now that's just way too much shit to keep track of when playing Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun. So much that by the time you get used to it, it's not even your turn anymore. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, in this game, everyone takes turns. Because it's impossible to have a 1v3 minigame. Like, who would do that, Mario Party? So the game ends up lasting a really unnecessary amount of time. Especially since you have to wait for the full squad to have their turn. But yeah, this minigame's just long and tiring. And that's all, oh wait, no. And that's 12 out of the 30 minigames. Now you may be wondering why I didn't take a look at the other 18 minigames. Well that's because this video is over 8 minutes. I mean, it, it could also be because they're unlockable and uh, I didn't unlock them. Yeah, we'll just go with that. All the minigames have one crucial thing in common that makes them all bad. They mostly just involve waggling the Wii remote, and the controls are pretty unresponsive all around. A lot of games also suffer from some serious pacing issues. The quarterback in particular. That minigame lasts forever. Despite its predecessor being popular enough to receive negative reviews, Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun continues to have zero reviews to this day. And that's where I come in. Yeah, this game isn't very good.